My name is Ryan, and today I will talk about the core network model for the evolution of the pore structure during the fabrication of silicon carbide membrane, which is made by chemical vapor deposition technique. Uh, so first I will give you a little bit of background of what I'm doing. Um, my work is divided into two parts. One is the uh, experimental work, which is the preparation technique uh, of these membranes, and the second part is the uh, uh, simulation and modeling of this work. Uh, and then finally I will summarize my uh, talk. So first let me give you a little bit of background. Uh, as you know in the recent year there has been considerable effort to make the membranes that are applicable for the high temperature purposes. The polymeric membranes that are available uh, they cannot withstand the high temperature and silicon carbide with its special characteristic it might be a good candidate for such application. So what are these applications? One of them is uh, producing hydrogen. Hydrogen is an uh, attractive, uh, fuel, uh, attractive fuel. It's a clean energy and it's flexible. So, and mostly it's produced by steam reforming reaction and water gas sheet reaction. So, uh, the first one is a steam reforming reaction and the second one is the water gas sheet reaction. So if you have a, a membrane reactor that can remove the, that would be perm selective to hydrogen, which remove the hydrogen from the product side, uh, then uh, you will get a higher conversion of hydrogen. And as you know, steam reforming reaction is an endothermic reaction. So if we can operate in the higher temperature, then we can e either go, even go to the higher conversion, so which is our purpose. But before we get to that application, uh, we have to first find a way to make these membranes. Uh, we basically, uh, and then before, even before making the membranes, we have to uh, make the support for those membranes because those are the really thin layer of membrane and they have to have a support so they can be sit on and give a physical strength. These are the support that we make. These are made of silicon carbide. These are the homemade support. And the good thing about this is that they're the same material as our membranes. And so in the high temperature, uh, we won't have any thermal expansion difference between the membrane and the support, so which is good for this application. So we put one of, this is the reactor that we make this membrane, uh, basically this is our CVD reactor. We put one of those supports here, and then we have our source for silicon carbide is a polymeric precursor which is called triisopropyl silen. Uh, it injected, it injected through the syringe pump, it preheated first to evaporate, and then it's carried out by the argon into the reactor, and it goes to the reactor, reactor function at, uh, we operate our experiment at between 700 to 800 degrees C. It goes there, it decomposes, and uh, go to the pores, and deposit it there, and shrink it to the pores, so the pores getting smaller and smaller, so we can measure the permeance of the gases that is coming out. So we did our test for two gases, uh, argon and helium. So as you can see, as the TPS decomposes, it starts shrinking to the pore, and the pore is getting smaller. So uh, helium being the smaller of those two gases, uh, can still access, while the pores are shrinking, it can still access the larger portion of the unplugged pore. So that's why the argon permeance decreases faster then helium causing the selectivity of these two gases goes up, which is good. And in order to, uh, so the next part of our job is that to model this phenomena, that means the shrinkage of this pores, how it happens, uh, it goes through what reaction and how we can like study better the phenomena. And then we can optimize it and make the uh, performance of the membranes better. 
So for doing that, we, uh, we develop a three-dimensional network, uh, which the polarity of the network are, di are distributed according to the pore size distribution that is generated by the computer and is pretty matched by our experimental pore size distribution. We study the effect of connectivity of the pores, uh, thickness of the network, and uh, the effect of pore blockage also is taken into account. So the simulator can monitor the pore size distribution during the deposition of the triazopropyl silent. So in order to give you an idea how this works, this is our support, this layer right here. And we divide it in three parts. One is the tube side, which the reactant goes in, uh, flows into the reactor. And then we have the shell side, which we measure the permeates. And we have the membrane section. So in the membrane section, we divided it. It's a five centimeter long membrane. And we divided it into a couple of uh, grid blocks. and each of these blocks are consist of a pore network, which shaped like this, and each pore uh, uh, are connected to a node, and then uh, the number of the pores that connected to each node is called connectivity. For example, for this case, the connectivity would be six. So basically what happened, uh, the reactant goes here, it goes to the pore, it decomposes and it reacts, and the pore is getting smaller and smaller as it continues. So before we start, uh, we have to have a right pore size distribution for this model. So this is the equation that we use for the pore size distribution. It generates the pore size distribution is the continuous line here. And it pretty match with our experimental data, which we do it for the, did it for the support for the, through the uh, perm perometry technique. And so this is the initial pore size distribution that you have and it's for the support. So membrane hasn't formed yet. So in order to uh, let these things go in, uh, we did the, uh, we used the dusty gas model, which is the same as maxwell stefan equation. And um, the pores shrink as the deposition continue. And uh, since the pores are shrinking, uh, the pore size are varying during the deposition. So what happened is that for each pore size, you have to use a different mechanism for the transport. So including viscous flow for the really big pores, hindered or configurational diffusion, and nodes and diffusion. Back. And we have to take all these three into account. So uh, the material balance for our uh, system would be the first two equations which A stands for the triazopropyl silane, and it has the reaction term, because that's the only, term, that's the only component which it reacts. And we have argon, which is this one. As you can see, here is a non-steady state equation. But <coughs> as you can uh, notice, uh, the amount of reaction and the amount of diffusion of the gases through the membrane uh, is more than uh, the change in the pore size. So we basically can neglect the uh, change of the pore size uh, with respect to the amount of that is diffusing. So we can uh, do this equation as a cozy steady state and cancel these first two terms. And then Rx is the reaction per unit volume of the component and it can be related to the per unit surface because it first goes to the pore, decomposes in the volume of the pore and then reaches the surface and react there. So this is the equation for the uh, reaction on the surface. And J is the total flux, which consists of diffusion flux, JD, and viscous flux, which is JB. And in order to do this with respect to time, we have to uh, correlate the amount of deposit on the pores to the pore size which we use this equation. So every time we solve for the, let's say for the first time step, we solve the equation, we have a profile of concentration all over the pore network, and then we can assume that we have a uniform deposition on the pores, and uh, we will get a new pore size distribution for the second time step, and then use that time step again, do the next time step until we get to the final point. And this is the equation for the nodes, 
uh, we assume that in the knots we don't have any reaction or any adsorption, so the only reaction happens in the pores. 